Barcelona star demands a $150 million transfer. Stay tuned to find out who. All right, so here we are at the start of season two, but a quick reminder, the whole goal of this career is to pay off our $1.5 billion of debt. We're about halfway there. We got 780 million left to go. And until we pay this off, we have a wage cap of 90,000 for all of our players' wages which means it's gonna be a little tough for recruitment here in the summer. So we take it to the free agents list, we're looking to be frugal, and in real life, players like Cassier and Christensen, they're probably going to Barcelona on free contracts, but in our save, they're not willing to go under that cap. So we miss out on a lot of really good potential players who could come into the team. We even reach with players like Bale, who are free agents this season. Always gonna be a long shot, but none of them work out for us. However, we keep going, all is not lost, we keep looking, we managed to sign a pre-contract with Ander Kappa, an outstanding right back with a lot of La Liga experience. Now, this is gonna be a big addition to our defense, but it means that our star talent, Gabriel Menino, might lose his spot there. So, with an eye on what to do with this really promising player we have, I'm gonna give him a shot in preseason here in midfield. Pedri's out. Why not? We're going to give him a run. We know what an amazing goal scoring talent he is, so that's something to watch out for. But we are not done yet. I think there's one player we all fell in love with last season. He had his time at Barcelona cut short after his loan spell came to an end. And I think you all know we're talking, of course, about Adama Traore. He desperately wants a return to Barcelona. He spoke to us and both player and club are interested. Now, the only trouble here is going to be finances. He's 31 million, which is probably out of our price range. So we try the straight offer here for Trincao plus a little bit of money, but they come back. They want Ricky Puig, who honestly is a pretty solid rotation player for us, but I left it up to the Discord. This is a tough decision. I think it's a no-brainer though. Adama Traore in, Ricky Puig out, one starter, one substitute. It is a blow for the team, but considering our financial crisis, I think we gotta do what we gotta do to keep our best players. So we make it happen, and I think we'll find a way to work around this. Maybe Menino will be our midfield replacement. We'll see as time goes. But for now, we have a chance at some serious money right now. 11.5 million is on the line if we win preseason, which could be huge for a club struggling financially like us. So on we go, every single game is gonna count here. Take a look also at the season two kits and a huge shout out to the Discord, specifically Mateo Carreri for those. And now let's check them out in action as we get to it here. I think if there is one player to watch out for here in preseason, it is Ansu Fati. Now, Farron Torres is away on international duty right now, so it's Fati's time to step up. I've seen so many comments recently talking about how we need to play Fati more, we need to focus on developing him. Well, this is his chance to show what he's got, and so far he's done exactly that. Unfortunately for us, a really scandalous play there as Giroud brings down star center back Araujo with a nasty challenge, not only injuring him in the process, but scoring a goal. Thankfully, the team's up for the challenge here to make a comeback. It is Sergi with two late goals in the game to secure a 3-1 victory against pretty tough opposition. And if there was any question about forgetting what a talent we had on our hands, Sergi is the real deal once again. Unfortunately for us, Araujo's out four months. What a nasty challenge here early in preseason. That's going to be a big, big blow to the team. You can see here already, our defense was not great to start with, and with Araujo out, it gets even worse. We have a really, really tough time not conceding chances, and it just relies solely on our offense to get up and running here. Thankfully, we just have so many good attacking talents, and Gabriel Menino, the player we've been speaking about as having an impression here in preseason, gets the job done out of midfield. Adama Traore, no exception either, uh, scoring a goal of his own, and then Menino sets up an unbelievably composed assist, for Ansu Fati, this front three has been insane. Uh, and Gabriel Menino specifically really made an impact already. I think we all saw last season how many goals he could score playing for right back. Well, how about an attacking central midfield position? We'll see exactly how many he grabs this season. But on we go here against Arsenal, still looking to secure all the prize money here in preseason. And Ansu Fati sets up Adama Traore, who has been a revelation already since signing. I think we knew what we could do based off of his loan spell last year, but uh, it's nice to see that he does hit the ground running here already. And now it all comes down to this final game here against Benfica. Sergi for Gavi. Our offense has been flowing. We score again and look to be on our way to securing $11.5 million 
in prize money, which essentially is just a bonus here. But not if our defense has anything to say about it. That is crushing. We just, no matter how good we play offensively, seem to concede a lot of chances. That is an absolute howler out of the back line. We already had a bad defense last season, and now with Araujo gone, it is calamitous at times. 15 minutes left, and now we gotta change the tides and get ourselves back in front of this game. Adama Traore puts one to the back post, and the call is answered by Ansu Fati, who has been the breakout star of preseason here. Well, Ferran Torres is away on international duty, and it is no problem to us. Fati secures the points, secures the money, and on we go to win preseason. $11.5 million in the door, and we are in good shape now. Not only that, but we're getting some deals done. We couldn't sell Trincao in that deal earlier, but he has some interest. 24.3 from Wolfsburg. Not bad at all. That is money I will take. He wasn't really in our plans anyways, especially with all the wingers we already have. So 35.8 profit already. So far, so good from the team. Honestly, we're pretty stacked all over the pitch. The one area of concern, obviously, now is Araujo. Four months out is almost half the season, so we have to do something about it. There's a couple players we could look at, but I left it up to a vote in the Discord, and you guys all made your voices heard. We're not gonna make a signing. We're gonna stick with Eric Garcia and Mingesa. We're gonna rotate, we're gonna do what we can and just save the money and not make a panic buy. Araujo will be back in time. A little bit of concern, maybe. I mean, these are our only three center backs. PK's getting old, the other two aren't necessarily great players yet, but it's a risk we're willing to take. The finances do come first here, and on we go with the team that we have. For now at least, Ferran Torres has come back from international duty and doesn't see a future here apparently. Well, talk about a wrench in the gears. I was absolutely banking on having him as part of our plans this season. This is a huge, huge blow to the team. Manchester United, with seemingly no say on our part, have triggered the release clause $150 million. And just like that, it's a done deal. In the blink of an eye, we lose our best player. Well, I'm speechless. I honestly, I don't know what to do at this point. Uh, no Araujo, no Torres. That's a big, big blow for the team. We just sold Trincao as well. It could not come at a worse time. Just one week ago, if we could have waited, we could at least have some cover, but now we are severely shorthanded. And despite getting a big sum of money, I think we need the players more than anything right now. You can see the depth is just not good. Our next best striker is 68 overall. So I'm taking it to the transfer market. There's a lot of wingers available. But we already know what the problem here is. Finances are a huge issue for us, specifically wages, and nobody is willing to join our project for under that 90,000 wage cap. There's a lot of good players available, but with none of them willing to join, it's kind of out of our hands. So we have three days left before the start of the season, and it's kind of all hands on deck now. So I guess desperate times call for desperate measures and we think outside the box a little bit to take a huge gamble on a player out of a contract. I am talking about Charlie Musanda, a former wonder kid in FIFA, a Chelsea player for many years at this point who had his career completely derailed by injuries. He is now 25 years of age, he's out of a contract. He's only 73 overall, but we know that there's a player in there. And honestly, based off of the way we've been playing this career, if anyone is gonna revive the career of a youngster, I do back us to be it. So we get the deal done. He's willing to sign for under our wage cap. He's on a free transfer, pretty low risk, high reward or high potential reward. And this is a big gamble. We need cover at right mid. We need cover at left mid. He can do it both. And he's a really solid player still. There is a player in there. What I'm worried about is his stamina, quite honestly. But I think once he plays some games and maybe gets into some kind of form, there is a talent to be uncovered in there. So, like I said, big gamble. Not the big name signing we would have wanted, but this is what we got to deal with for the time being. Uh, and really, for the time being, Ansu Fati is going to be our breakout star. He's leading the line from the left. There's a lot of expectation on him, Triore, and Sergi, and hopefully we can just get the best out of our bench for the rest of the season. So, with all eyes on the start of this campaign, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, well, I said it in the warm-up to this game, but the man to watch out for here, undeniably, is Ansu Fati. Pounces on an early chance here, off of the high press, to score yet again. Our number 10 has been unbelievable. 
Now, he didn't have the worst season in the world last time out, but he has stepped it up into a whole nother gear. And honestly, with Ferran Torres gone, if we have a player of this caliber stepping up in his shoes, I am not all that worried. Obviously, this has not been the ideal transfer window for us, but there's a lot to be excited about. Sergi scores an absolute banger to top that one off just before halftime. And at the moment, our boys look unstoppable. We have teenagers all over the pitch chipping in. And although our defense is a pretty big concern here later in the match, we do have a lot of promising stuff going on on the pitch here in our opening game. Gabriel Menino comes off the bench to try to turn the tides here as things start to slip out of our favor. And boy, does he deliver once again. Unbelievable stuff. Gabriel Menino scoring yet again. And I'm running out of players to be complimentary of. Gabriel Menino scores, Sergi scores, Fati scores, all the usual suspects. Make sure we get off to the best possible start in the league with a 3-1 victory. And on we go, still chasing points here. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some big, big concerns in this team. Realistically, we're probably a worse team than we were on paper from the end of last season. And our defense looks absolutely shambolic. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But hopefully we can just paper over those cracks. Unfortunately, Gerard Piquet showing why he is getting up there with age. Again, outpaced by Fakir, <laughs> who barely has two good knees to run off of and he is struggling to cover the center of the pitch here. Hopefully it won't come back to bite us, but we know this team has a lot of attacking firepower in it and can always find our way back into games. And here we have it, Pedri for Fati again, who scores. He is absolutely unstoppable. Ansu Fati, the breakout star of this team already this season. I have lost count of how many goals he scored between preseason and now, but it's gotta be five or six at this point with only a handful of games. And we keep turning the tides here. Adama Traore, a beast on the counterattack, finds another goal himself, uh, quietly having an outstanding start to the season, and it's enough to secure us the victory. 2-1. Again, I think we're uh, sort of papering over these defensive cracks with good offensive performances, but as long as it gets the job done, I am a happy camper. Two games, two wins, and on we go. But... Once again, we concede <laughs> Barcelona having a really, really, really hard time on defense here. And I think it is going to be another running theme this season. We saw it last year. We probably have a worse defense this year, especially with Araujo out. It's going to be down to the offense. Unfortunately for us, when the offense struggles to score, we struggle to get anything out of games. Ansu Fati here trying to do the most he can to take the reins into his own hands, but we go into halftime with barely a touch from our most important players. Sergi has been mostly absent, unfortunately to say here. So it's some substitutions coming on late in the game. Once again, Gabriel Menino, the man to come off the bench. He scored goals before. Can he do it again now? It's Easy Abdi, the other substitute for Alex Balde, who puts it to the back post. Menino again. Unbelievable stuff from the Brazilian. He has been a absolute revelation at center mid. Again, I'm running out of uh, being able to count how many goals he scored in the last couple games as well. I think between Fati and Menino, we have two absolute superstars breaking out into this team and delivering on the highest stage. Once again, we're able to turn the tides enough to just get a point out of this game and somehow we still have gone undefeated this season despite some serious frailties in the squad. And that leaves us sitting in first place somehow. Seven points from our opening three. Not too bad all in all. I mean, obviously, this isn't the exact kind of team we want to be cranking out performances with, but it is what it is for the time being. And I think we've done some decent business. Kappa on a free, Musanda on a free. We'll have to see how that one pans out. A bunch of loan offers. But most importantly, we raised a ton of money, which at the end of the day for now, that's our goal. We made a lot of money off Trincao. Adama Traore, we did for some pretty good business, 12 million, not bad. And then obviously 150 million, incredible stuff uh, to get money at least out of Ferran Torres. So we've made 175 million this summer. And despite the fact that it would always be nicer to have a stronger team, we're doing a really good job with our main goal here. We've paid $900 million off. And with all eyes on the upcoming Europa League, our team is actually doing okay. I think we've uh, made the most of what we have. We don't have the most depth this season. We're probably gonna struggle a little bit if I'm being realistic, but we're gonna rotate. We're gonna keep developing youth. We're gonna give them the shot. Musanda will make the bench for this game. This could be his chance to show what he's got. Let's get to it. 
All right, well, we're going to see a lot of this this season, rotating youth in and out of the side. We're going to have a lot of competitions to play in, and with not that many players available from the bench, we're going to have to make the most of every single squad player we have. Predictably, though, we're struggling. Our defense on its day isn't great anyways, and especially when we start rotating players, uh, we deservedly come under a lot of pressure here. We do end up conceding off of a really, really poor corner there. Pena making a huge mistake out of it. Mingesa as well. I, I do have some serious questions about some of these players, but the team is the team for the time being, and we just have to make the most of our squad uh, while we have it. Charlie Musanda, given the chance to come off the bench, he has been years out of action at this point, and his first couple touches of the ball here could be very vital in just getting his footing in the game. And you can see it doesn't honestly look like he's lost a step. He did give the ball up there, but he's got quick feet, and I think there is a genuine player in there if we can just unlock it. Don't want to put too much pressure on the lad right away. We're going to integrate him slowly into the team, but uh, here we go. Charlie Musanda slipped in just like that. It's too easy at the moment, and Gavi finds the back of the net. Well, how about that for an impact sub? Charlie Musanda, two touches of the ball maybe, and he grabs an assist. Just like that, a deadly run in behind, quick step over his great assist in the end, and Gavi, man of the moment, to score an, an important moment once again for this team. We've seen that happen a lot over the last season or two. Yukla now for Menino, cranking up the pressure, and Barcelona, just like that, are well back and in this game. We're finding our footing here slowly but surely. Musanda looks hungry for a goal. Honestly, looks really sharp already here on his debut. Gavi for Triore, completely dominating the game here. Barcelona, Gavi again plays it through. Musanda taking his man on, poked away. He's a high risk, high reward kind of dribbler, but I think we're going to see some of those come off this season if he keeps playing like that. Menino now charging through midfield. Incredible pass there from Menino to find Triore, who has options at the back post for Musanda, who scores! 88 minutes into the game and we take the lead for the first time. Charlie Musanda, what an absolute dream start here for Barcelona. I don't know how many times this is going to happen this career. It seems like we have so many bright debuts and now Charlie Musanda is no exception. A goal, an assist, and we get the win most importantly. Once again coming back from a dangerous position, but once again somehow winning all three points. All right, well, we take it to our first Europa League game here where it's a bit of a rivalry. We take on AC Milan, who were the team that just injured Araujo in preseason, so it's going to be a little bit personal. In the meantime, Charlie Musanda, I noticed he was wearing the number 8 that was auto assigned, so I'm going to give him 27. I think that was the number he was most recently wearing in real life. Uh, Menino, why not? You can grab number 8. If he's playing in midfield, I think it's more than deserved the kind of way he's been playing, too. Troyore, he's going to get the number 11. It's sitting wide open. I think that is calling his name at this point and without further ado now we can get ahead to our game against AC Milan to be perfectly honest this group looks pretty well set up for us Milan's gonna be tough but the other two teams in our division honestly not too much of a concern for me let's not take anything for granted but I think we could have a really good road here in the Europa League with the kind of team we got we have some serious issues and concerns especially defensively but don't forget we have a really solid team still we're developing youngsters we look strong and the questions in the conference already here are about winning the uh, Europa League. So a lot of pressure on us. And with all eyes on this first game and getting it underway, let's get to it. All right, here we go. Huge occasion for a huge team. Barcelona, despite our struggles on and off the pitch this season, still have fantastic potential. And I do think we're building something special here. However, AC Milan, a really solid side as well. They just won the Serie A. They are stacked all over the pitch. And we deservedly find ourselves on the back foot here only 11 minutes into the game. I think if there's a running theme we've seen, it's defense is the problem. I'm going to say it time and time again. And once again, it is our undoing here early in the match. Men against boys for the most part for the opening 15 here. The team is struggling to cover. And honestly, embarrassing marking there off the corner sees us go a goal down already. And AC Milan far from done yet. Passing around our back line like it's not even there. And if not for an incredible save by Buffon, we could be two goals down here. Fernando twisting, turning. And again, PK makes a meal of that one. Saved by Buffon. And again, PK trips over his own feet. It's in the back of the net. That is absolutely embarrassing stuff there from the back line. No one able to clear. 
And deservedly, we go a second goal down. This could be the rude awakening we've been waiting for this season. We've somehow been pulling results out against the odds here. And as we come up towards halftime, we've barely had the ball in the opposition final third at all. It's a huge breather here. We have 45 more minutes to at least try to turn the tides a little bit here. But it's embarrassing to say the least so far from Barcelona. We have a big ask ahead of us here. Adama Traore now makes the run over the top. Unbelievable ball from Pedri, who's... Been a little quiet in terms of praise this episode, but don't forget he is a world-class player and Triore bulldozing his way through the back line. Menino, ball over the top for Triore! Who scores? He makes it happen all on his own. I guess fair credit though, <laughs> Pedri with that first ball and then Menino with the second ball. Gabriel Menino has been an unbelievable surprise this episode. I did not think he was going to succeed that much in the center of the pitch, but he's on his way to probably being our guaranteed starter at the moment. And on we go here, tripped up again by AC Milan, who are desperate to keep themselves ahead in this game, as we definitely have done a lot more here in the second half at the very least. Sergi brought down now the latest. This is becoming a bit of a rivalry between these teams. Some nasty challenges, mostly from the AC Milan side of things, but we stay in the game. We're not going to be put off by some harsh challenges. We're going to keep pressuring and try to win this game, at least get ourselves back on level terms though. <laughs> Adama Traore charging through again though. We keep up the high press. Can we catch them out? Menino closing down and he wins it back for Traore. He's got a man across the face of goal and that man is Ansu Fati again scoring in a crucial moment for Barcelona in a game that I thought we were well out of here in the first half and just like that we are back on level terms. Menino with the heart to win the ball back. Traore with an assist and then Ansu Fati to cap it off. Well, a game that we were probably second best in for a lot of it doesn't matter in the end. We are still somehow undefeated. 2-2, it's an incredible result against AC Milan. What heart from this team. All right, well, it's been a really weird start to the season to say the least, but all in all, it has not been bad at all. We're sitting in fourth place with a game in hand though. If we win this, we could be back up to first potentially, which would be crazy considering the kind of performances we've been having. Uh, but I just want to call out how good some of these players have been. Ansu Fati has scored six goals in eight appearances across uh, preseason through now. Adama Traore as well. What a signing he's been. Absolute bargain, even with the swap for Puig in there. Gabriel Menino as well has stepped up in a huge way, surprise of the season for me, doing absolute bits in midfield. I think we're probably going to have to convert him from a right back if he keeps up like this. Um, the only player who I can say has been comparatively quiet is maybe Sergi. He's only scored once, but still a hugely important player for us. And I think we're scoring so many goals, it's not exactly like we're missing his contributions right now. Um, the other surprise this season has been Charlie Musanda. I did not think he was going to have that much of an impact in his first game. And I don't know if he's going to be a starter or that much of an important player right now, but one to keep an eye out for, for sure. He looked really, really bright in that opening performance. And so far, so good from Barcelona. We'll march on with this season. If you guys want to help behind the scenes, join the Discord. Links in the description. It's free. We'd love to have you all there. I'm taking everyone's input into this series as you've seen so far. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't already. It'll help you stay up to date. And I will be back soon with the next episode. But until then, I'm Respected Jeff, and I'll see you next time.